I'm Professor Dino for the LNG. This session, we are going to discuss a topic called internal expanding shoe. This particular topic to talk about internal expanding shoe brick and its mechanism with its design. So now let's move on to what exactly internal expanding shoe brick is. Internal expanding shoe brick is a type of brick which provides a breaking point. The help of creating a pressure on rotating element and by creating a friction force to stop that rotation. So, in this particular session, we are going to discuss about how this mechanism will going to work and how the step by step design, or you can say a movement, or you can say a particular component, will go to design by. So, let's move on to that. So. Uh, here you can see an schematic diagram for an internal expanding shoe. Here, first of all, here it is internal expanding shoe brick consist of shoe S1 and S2, which is powered at point O1 and O2, which is having a mounted brake liner button and a spring which is connected through a cam to actuate that two particular S1 and S2. Okay? I hope you got this arrangement very well. The outer drum is a rotating element which is rotating right now in anti-clockwise direction. So S1 and S2, after pressurizing them, it, they will create a pressure on wall of this rotating. Let's get into this mechanical or you can say free body diagram of internal expanding shoe brake and try to understand how this force is going to work. Okay. So after applying force, F1 and F2. They both will create two types of force on our internal expanding shoe brake. One will be a reaction force or you can say a reactionary force exactly opposite direction to this F1 and F2 uh, from this shoe and they are acting through this O1 or an O2 with a pivoted point. At the same time, to oppose that rotating movement, the frictional force will be created on this particular rotating element. Clear? In the case of S1, it will be going to be downward side and in the case of S2, it will be going to upwards. Let's talk about what type of output will going to or resultant moment will going to produce due to F1, RN and TF. F1 will try to push our shoe S1 to point over clear uh, with the length L. Clear? So ultimately, it will try to create an anti-clockwise moment. At the same time, RM will try to create clockwise moment in the inside with 2.0B. Here you can see that point B clear. OA is uh, our radius having R, the one element we have considered. Uh, let's go, uh, we will talk about that later. At the same time, uh, this frictional force also will create anti clockwise uh, moment. So here you have got this point that F1 and BF will be anti clockwise, RN will be clockwise. At the same time on S2, RN will be anti clockwise, F, DF will be anti clockwise, and F2 will be clockwise. So here, this F1 and uh, uh, friction force will be supporting each other. Here, F2, F2 will be opposing all the movement will be created by S2. Now, let's talk about the consideration we have going to design on based on the uh, design that we will going to have. Here you can see. Theta 1 and theta 2 angle made by material, brake liner material, top of brake liner material with O1 and bottom of uh, brake liner material with O over. The top uh, angle will be called as theta 2, bottom angle will be called, uh, called as a theta 1. Now let's consider a smaller element which is CA on this particular brake liner material and after applying force, the CA will be moving. Now we will consider this action on the CA and then we will try to find how this action will directly affect our design or movement of this particular internal expanding shoe. So let's consider this. The internal expanding shoe brake is having a radius R which has width B which has maximum pressure P1, normal pressure P, Pn and F1, F2 is acting upon that. Here O1B is O1 sin theta. So here the distance of that particular force Rn from that O1, O1B is denoted by in terms of O1 which is O1 sin theta because I have to convert and I want to convert each and every terminology in terms of sin theta 
as well as O O one and R because those are the reference points and reference nomenclature which we are going to use while designing. Clear? This particular normal force is related to direct force or maximum force, even sine theta, and which is creating a normal pressure into the area of particular element. Now let's find out the force. There are two forces which we have talked about. One is the normal force, and another is a uh, frictional force. And both these forces will try to create that frictional torque, or you can say. Break. So let's talk about first of all that particular reaction force acting on that smaller element which we have considered AC, which is having area of B R D theta, where B is its width and R D theta its radius it into its angle which is representing its arc so ultimately the pressure or force generated by that particular element is called pn rn it is pn into area which is given sin theta vr d now let's convert that into frictional force this frictional force is nothing but multiplication of coefficient of friction with this normal force and which is represented by mu into p1 sin theta into vr d theta now ultimately this frictional force will help us to create the frictional torque which is d theta d ta, dt and this dt is nothing but the multiplication of this frictional force into radius here so it will be df into r and ultimately it will be mu p1 sin b r square d theta i hope you got this point to find out total torque acting upon our this element or a breaking torque acting upon this particular element we have to integrate it from theta 1 to theta 2 where theta 1 is bottom portion or bottom limit of our lining material and theta 2 is top portion of our lining material so ultimately here we have provided integration of this particular dt which is represented by mu p1 P R square theta two to theta one sine theta into mu is uh, uh, which is equals to we have provided this sine theta is minus cos theta and ultimately it will be represented by mu P one P R square cos theta one minus cos theta. Okay, so moment of force is now we have to find moment generated by this reaction force as well as frictional force. now moment generated by reaction force or you can say mn or a normal force which is acting through o1 which is represented by delta rn into its longitudinal distance or perpendicular distance o which is drn o o1 sin theta and ultimately it will be p sin theta br d theta o and sin theta so we have to integrate this from theta 2 to theta 1 which is our term is p1 sin square theta b r theta d theta o over so let's move on to that particular integration now let's find uh, let's have our integration to find total moment generated by this particular element which is m n here from theta 1 to theta 2 p1 sin square theta b r theta d theta o over now if i want to integrate the sin square theta d theta i have to convert that into uh, terms which can be integratable which is sin square theta is equal to 1 by 2 so ultimately my final equation will be look like uh, it's 1 by 2 p1 b r o over theta minus sin 2 theta by 2 let's put the limit inside this so ultimately after putting limit inside this it will look like this 1 upon t1 b r o over theta 2 to minus 1 by 2 sin 2 theta minus sin 2 theta 2. This is moment generated by our frictional, sorry, uh, our normal force, normal reaction. Now let's talk about moment generated by frictional force, which is acting through perpendicular distance AB at point O1, and which is represented by dF into AB. So dF into AB will be nothing but R minus O O1 cos theta. Because from our diagram, you can see uh, from this diagram, this particular B point and this is particular A point. So this is AB is nothing but total R minus OB. Okay, yeah, so that that particular uh, relation we have used here R minus OB, which is O over. Now we are converting that OB into O over cos theta by considering this smaller triangle, which is O over B. Clear? Okay, so O over cos theta, and then we will put integration for the to find out this particular element. Now let's 
<coughs> simplify this particular equation. Let's uh, multiply this sine theta inside this particular value. So ultimately, we will find a mu p1 dr into r sine theta minus o o1 by two sine two theta d theta. Now let's have integration of this particular element from theta one to theta two. After applying uh, integration, we find out this particular equation. This is final equation. This mu p one b r r into cos theta one minus cos theta two theta o uh, over by four cos theta two minus cos theta one. Clear? These are two moment generated by our normal reaction as well as frictional force. This normal reaction and frictional force will decide what type of force and what amount of force we have to put on our shoes, and what kind of kind of reaction it will generate due to that. Now let's talk about the reaction generated at shoe oven. Clear? Then that point F1 into L is equals to moment due generated due to normal reaction minus. Moment due to friction because both are creating reaction in opposite direction. That normal one in clockwise and normal uh, one anticlockwise. But in the case of shoe as to both the reaction normal as well as friction or moment generated as both of them are supporting each other. So ultimately it will be summation. So in the case of two S one, if frictional moment is increased. Compared to normal moment, then your shoe will get into R or your brake will get into self-locking phenomenon. So to avoid the self-locking phenomenon, we have to make sure that the uh, frictional moment should be always lesser than lesser compared to R uh, normal reaction. I hope you got this each and every terminology in this particular derivation. Well, this has uh, this contains seven marks even. As well as in our uh, 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 examination, I hope you got this point very well. I have taken this particular theory directly from machine design or by R S Kumli here. And I hope you enjoyed the session. If you are having any doubt regarding to this session, uh, you can directly ask me, ask me. Uh, and